Now uh, we are moving into the deep of machining fluids as the course is machining and machining fluids. So till now we have seen the what is the problems of cutting fluids at the same time what are the advantages of cutting fluids and additives. To summarize that just we move the cutting fluid additives and its advantages which we have studied in the one of the lectures of the previous class just you see the base is a mineral oil or esters and the emulsifiers that is called sulfonates and soaps, synthetic etensides and corrosion protection that is called rust inhibitors, sulfonates, soaps and all those things like a pH regulators, alkalamines, water protection, the mineral oils, esters and all those things we have seen, biocides which are most important from the point of not growing the microbial organisms, anti-foaming agents like hydrophobic silica and all those things we have seen. So these are the advantages if you take the additives like emulsifiers, emulsifiers will have polar head and non-polar tail which will mix the cutting fluid with the water that is the mineral oil with the water that we have seen that is a, how it is done also we have seen at the same time biocides how the biocides are going to help uh, in order to prevent all these type of microorganisms formation okay so this is the advantages of additives okay like cutting fluid additives additives advantages okay these are the advantages. So, at the same time this uh, will have side effects as well as other things that is called disadvantage of cutting fluid which we have also seen in the previous class. So, everything will have the pros and cons like uh, it will have the positive side and the negative side. One side of the coin if you see it is very very positive things if you are adding the additives that we have seen in the previous slide. Now, we are going to see the on the other side of the coin that is a disadvantages if you use emulsifiers, if you use the biocides, if you use rust inhibitors and all those things. Some of the disadvantages that also we have seen just I am going to summarize that is one of the things is chlorine act is another one another thing is dermatitis which is a contact dermatitis whenever the splashing is taking place on the operator. Thyroid cancer whenever you intake it then the thyroid cancer will follicle taste because when the operator is operating by bending his head. If you are looking at the operator operation and you are seeing that if the splashing is take place, so it will fall on the hair and these oils will go into the pores of the hair and wherever it occupies the hair growth is not going to take place. That is why irregular hair growth is there that is called follicle taste. This is the advantage and uh, you can see that uh, the particles. Uh, Normally 10 microns are below person can breathe if the particle size is 2.5 microns normally it can go into the alveolar region of your lungs and which will affect that is why normally this is particles as well as the vapors that is coming out should be carefully prevented from the breathing and all those things ok. So this is the on the other side of the cutting fluid if you use the cutting fluid advantages are there disadvantages are there. Then as a mechanical engineering, as a manufacturing engineer, how you are going to take only the advantages and avoid the disadvantages that is the most uh, thing that one has to look ok. So, being a manufacturing engineer things are very complicated from if you see the advantages and disadvantages. So, some of the other additives and disadvantages is if you later this is what the operator is concerned. If you want to look at the environmental point of view like water pollution or soil pollution this is how it will take place ok. So, normally once the cutting fluid is used they will going to dump into the river nearby river bodies that will cause us the ecological system of that river it will damage that is called water pollution. And the soil pollution how they will dig a hole and just dump it. So, this will causes the soil pollution these are the two disadvantages apart from the operator's point of view ok. So, what is the precaution that one has to take the precaution one has to take is you should make sure that this should be uh, 
properly treated before whenever you are going to use it okay this is before disposing of this cutting fluid into the sewage system one should ensure the following it is should be water soluble so it should be water soluble so that there won't be much problem in the soluble or if there is a oil if it is insoluble if there is a oil formation on top of it then ecological system which is depending on the sunlight many other things will destroy check the rancid nature normally the smell bad smell or something should not come so you have this normally you can avoid by the biocides addition chips and fine particles have been removed normally you have to make sure that the chips and fine particles should be removed otherwise if it mixes with water and goes if the fishes are there prawns are there what are the uh, living body ecosystem is there this will uh, just if they intake what will happen it will cut it, their internal organs and all those things these are very dangerous from the point of water body uh, organisms as concerned does not contain any toxic concentration and heavy metal ions okay it should not have the toxic concentration if the toxic concentration is there then the ecological system toxic properties will goes up at the same time heavy metal ions normally whenever you see our aqua guard or uh, kent whatever we use at our homes normally you will have to use iron filter heavy metal filter many 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 filters apart from your aqua guard basic system is concerned so this has a big disadvantage from the point of drinking because the fishes the river water or the pond water whatever wherever it stays that is their source of drinking water if it is this the this type of elements are there then it will be a problem for them that's why one should uh, avoid all these things or you should prevent all these things whenever you just you dispose into the nearby water bodies all these are regarding the water pollution is concerned so regarding the water pollution is concerned so now you have two things to note one is advantages another one is disadvantages as a manufacturing engineer you get a big question mark that is how to tackle this so you need the advantages but you don't want disadvantages in it okay so till now we have discussed or the studied the cutting fluid additives and its of advantages as well as disadvantages only i want to take advantages i don't want this emissions in it so how you should overcome it so so one cannot avoid the cutting fluid looking at its manufacturing performance okay if you don't use the cutting fluid you can say that the mechanical performance will go down like tool wear will increase tool forces will increase and tool life will decrease these are the things that is problematic if you don't use the cutting fluid that's why you need to use the cutting fluid but in a wise manner how and you should choose the cutting fluid composition such a way that it should not harm or it should not emit lot of dangerous emissions but the performance should be equivalent to whatever the mineral line that we are talking about okay so how to overcome these ecological problems by keeping the mechanical performance as i required okay for that purpose eco friendly cutting fluids are coming into picture okay so we will see about the eco friendly cutting fluids what are these eco friendly cutting fluids how the eco friendly cutting fluids are going to help is they are going to generate any type of emissions or those and all those things we will see okay so now we will move to eco friendly cutting fluids this itself is a very big area but i will summarize in a suitable way okay so normally if you see the cutting fluids cutting fluids uh, selection criteria normally depends on many things such as heat transfer performance so process performance whether it is highly it is transferring the heat properly whether it is tribological performance that is lubricating properly or not flushing action whether it is flushing the chips properly or not it will decide and fluid mist generation if there if at all i want to use as a mql whether it is giving me the mist generation properly and corrosion inhibition so it will it should not corrode the product afterwards okay apart from all these things the cost of the cutting fluid also should be as minimum as possible okay 
it should be minimum as possible okay so at the same time environmental performance and health hazard performance is also most important for a cutting fluid if at all i consider if i want to use in my company mechanical performance is important however the environmental performance or environmental aspects whenever i use these cutting fluids and the health hazard that causes those emissions causes should also have equal importance that is what no so a cutting fluid is there if a cutting fluid is there it should have both equal that is called one should be mechanical performance performance and another one see is environmental effects environmental performance you can say are environmentally it should be good so these two things should be equally important for a cutting fluid or a machining fluid okay so based on this normally the selection criteria will take place okay as the pollution is growing if you see the greenhouse effect is coming and global warming is taking place because the pollution is coming into picture that's why lot of companies or the government organizations are imposing lot of strict and stringent rules on the companies where if at all somebody want to put a company they have to get the green tribunal clearance or environmental clearance from the state as well as center in india that's why this equal to your machining performance are more than important if you are you are giving more emissions that means that on the second day the government may ask you to close your company so environmental pollution water pollution or soil pollution these pollutions also have greater influence on the sustainability of your company okay that's why you should choose the cutting fluid based on mechanical performance since you want the profits at the same time you should not close your company in between by emitting lot of emissions that's why you should be taken care the two things you have to merge and you should solve your solution for that purpose you have to choose certain good and environmental friendly cutting fluids okay so various eco friendly cutting fluids that we are going to choose you may be assuming why dr ravi shankar has given this title so machining is important at the same time machining fluid also important hope by this time many people would have understood this thing however that's why when we are taken machining as a mechanical engineer you may be many things you may be aware as a machining fluids some of you may be aware some of you may not be aware that's why whenever i have two things one is a machining one is a machining fluids i have advantages and disadvantages for both then i will explain at the end how these disadvantages can be overcome that is the motive of this course okay hope you understand now so some of the various commonly available eco friendly cutting fluids one is a vegetable oils second is bio cutting fluids bio cutting fluids you can make by is the mixture of in uh, eco friendly vegetable oils or there are some standard companies which uh, sell this uh, bio cutting fluids okay semi synthetic cutting fluids and liquid nitrogen this is cryogenic fluid where this cryogenic fluids will have better cooling properties okay so ionized air cooling system and water vapor as a cutting fluid some people they will use water vapor as a also cutting fluid water cold water as a also a cutting fluid and all those thing but only problem is rusting so our oxidization problems will take place for that purpose you can use the rust inhibitors dielectric fluids and all those things okay you can see some of the examples like sunflower oil coconut oil canola oil and liquid nitrogen that is these are all the one of the eco friendly cutting i cannot say this uh, liquid nitrogen or something because uh, liquid nitrogen is a uh, costly from the economical point of view it is uh, may not be 
that much until unless the, your institute have the liquid nitrogen plant and all those things. So, so easiest ways of using normally locally available oils, okay, like coconut oil or sunflower oil, soya bean oil. These are all the oils that you can use as a cutting fluid because if you use this cutting coconut oil and all those things, some of the states in India like Kerala, those people will use as a one of the food ingredients. So it is biodegradable and it's good. Second thing is that whenever you are using in the pan, the temperature goes up, vapors also come. If the vapors is not dangerous, that's why whenever this coconut oil or this sunflower oil, whenever you put as a lubricant or a cutting fluid, what will happen? Even though vapors comes, it will not affect. So that is user friendly. Okay. So common vegetable oils, if you see the produced from the plants and grass crops, you can see here, these are the some of the things that you can see here. Good substitutes for petroleum based oils. Petroleum based oils are, are the mineral oils which develop lot of emissions which will be very dangerous for the operators. That is why we can replace with vegetable oil with this type of uh, petroleum based oils can be replaced by the vegetable oils. Okay. Renewable and biodegradable and non-toxic in nature. These are renewable. Okay, you can uh, get it easily. At the same time, these are biodegradable. As I said, no coconut oil, for example, or the sunflower oil, you can use as a one of the ingredients in the food. Okay, this is biodegradable. People eat it. If you can eat it, these things, why can't you use? If they have a better cooling property, better lubricating property, uh, then in the machining operations, that is what. And it is non-toxic in nature because. Since you are consuming it, it is not affecting your ecological system, so it is non-toxic. Okay, so you can use this as a machining fluid. Tendency to get investigated, metabolized by microorganisms. Okay, if you want to discard this cutting fluid after some time, assume that I am using a coconut oil or sunflower oil. So, if you recycle it, recycle it and all those things, then now you want to discard as you have seen in the previous slide. So, in that circumstances, if you want to dump into the nearby the water bodies also, it will not be much problem. It may be a problem for that particular instant, but this can be metabolized by the microorganisms that are present in the river. Okay. So, after some time, there will not be much problem in it. So, mainly consists of triglycerides. These triglycerides are long chain carboxylic acid basically and glycerol. Okay. Some of these uh, vegetable based cutting fluids will have the long chain carboxylic acid. These long chain carboxylic acids whenever they are first time whenever they fall into the machining region what will happen is they crack down or thermally and becomes a small chain and all those things. It will also will have glycerol in it. Okay. So, triglycerides have good boundary lubrication. As you see the boundary lubrication, you have seen three types of lubrication in the tribological aspects of machining. One is boundary lubrication, mixed lubrication and hydrodynamic lubrication. In that circumstances, the boundary lubrication means where you have a solid to solid dominating contact and you will have a very, very fine uh, lubrication in it. Even though if it is having a very fine lubrication, still it looks or it works very perfectly. That is what it mean to say and the, it do not loses its structural stability. Structural stability for any fluid, it is most important. If it is losing with respect to temperature, the structural stability, it goes. Assume that I am putting a certain cutting fluid in it. and if the thermal cracking is taking place and the big chain breaking into two chains and at the same time this is happening for those cutting fluids which are falling for touching the machining region. Those cutting fluid which are not touching the cutting fluid that is 75 to 80 percent of the cutting fluid just flows into the cutting fluid tank. In that circumstances you have a mixture of thermally cracked and non cracked cutting fluid in the cutting fluid tank. So, you are destroying the cutting fluid tank. That is why if you have structural stability, good structural stability even though it falls in the machining region, then it is very good. That means that the cutting fluid that is going into the cutting fluid tank will be good. Okay? So, it is not destroyed. That is why the structural stability of the cutting fluid should be good. And it will 
over the range of temperature that is what no temperature in the particular range of operation if the structural stability is not changing that means that every molecule of the cutting fluid within the cutting fluid tank after the recirculating also will have a good structure or uniform structure okay possess high flash point normally that means low volatility that means that it is not volatile so whenever exposure to atmospheric conditions or whenever you get exposure to the low temperatures like 100 degrees or something it should not be volatile at that particular temperature or machining temperature if it is volatile there is a chances of catching fire and all those things okay and it may cause lot of hazards also that's why you should be very careful in choosing the flash point fire point and other points and all those things for example of this vegetable oils is rapeseed oil is one example canola oil is another example and most importantly in india we will get coconut oil and the coconut oil is one of the local oils that we can have across any part of india wherever the coconut trees are abundant example kerala such type of uh, places you will get that uh, economical price if you can play with this coconut oil for your phd but only thing is subjected to all these additives okay you should choose the chemical stability structural stability of your coconut oil and uh, the interaction of this various chemicals that are there that you are going to add to the cutting fluid and all those things you should be very careful okay so we are going to see the comparison machining performance of mineral oil versus vegetable oil okay so whenever we are going to use a particular vegetable oil is it is going to give me better mechanical performance or low performance or higher performance than my standard mineral oil okay my mineral oil is what the standard car on which if my if i am going to use my vegetable oil am i going to get better or not that is the first thing one has to check before you choose to go towards the vegetable oil okay if you see the cutting speed versus tool life we have three type of oils one is mineral oil emulsion is there another one is the synthetic based ester is there the third one is the vegetable oil emulsions are there okay so the triangle which is shown here will represent the vegetable oils okay in that circumstances if you see here what is happening here is the two life particular conditions assume that i am going to use a particular condition like uh, 175 or something is a cutting speed it will be like 8 minutes the two life and 10.5 or is there and 12.5 or something is the two life okay for this particular speed you can see or any other particular speed if you see always my vegetable oil is giving better results compared to my other two that is reported by one of the authors in the paper okay it is a technical le specified results that means a technically verified after doing these three for the cutting speed versus to life normally if you see vt power n equal to constant where your cutting speed is major component in deciding the to life okay if you see another performance this is what we have seen in a normal machining condition if at all do this cutting fluids which are i am choosing as a vegetable oils are going to perform for some other uh, mechanical machining processes like reaming process tapping process turning process again reaming torque uh, reaming thrust and drilling to life and all those things is it going to work for us that also the author has checked the performance index he has given and if you see just for example in the drilling to life it is tremendously high okay 
if you see the tremendously it is high and it is performance index is above 300. Whereas, if you see the synthetic based esters and mineral oils, it is approximately 100 percent is a performance index. If you see particularly for this one, the performance index is ok, this is 100 percent and this holds good for approximately 190 percent or something, this holds good for 310 or something above 300. That means, not only for normal machining, for the drilling, for the reaming, for the turning other applications also vegetable oil gives me better results compared to mineral oil. That is what the technical proof is concerned from the research paper. That what I want to say from this particular figure or this particular slide is concerned is my V t power n equal to constant whatever the tool life or the performance of the cutting fluid mechanically is better than mineral oil. Now, as you have seen mineral oils will give lot of emissions, my eco friendly cutting fluids will not give harmful emissions. So, from that point ecological point of view I am good, mineral oils are not good, cutting eco friendly cutting fluids are good. From the second from this particular slide mechanical performance also is much better compared to my mineral oil. Now, two things are matching for me one mechanical performance is very good at the same time it is ecological from the point of health of the arca operator from the soil pollution from the water pollution. Now, I can move forward for testing further. Okay? If you see now I am moving to soybean oil. Soybean oil is one of the oils that normally available and this is eco friendly in nature. These are the soybean oil how the soybean oil or the soya beans basically look like these are the soya beans this is the soya bean and these are the soya beans how it look like and the oil normally this is the food grade oil one of the food grade oils. Every 100 grams of soybean oil consists of 16 grams of saturated fat. 23 grams of monosaturated fat and 58 grams of polyunsaturated fat. Okay. So, most of the things oils will have the fat. Okay. That is why for example, if you see whenever you go if you are an obesity patient or something whenever you go to the doctor normally they say why are you you try to reduce the oil consumption and all those things because it will have lot of fats in it. Okay. At the same time that is the negative side of that one if at all I want to see from the positive side whenever I want to purchase or whenever you want once somebody want to purchase a soap whenever you go to the market what you will see whenever uh, you want to purchase a soap the first and obvious thing that you check is a cost. Okay. The second what I suggest you you, you should see that a TFM if you just rotate on the back side of the soap you will have TFM total fat material content that means, it will have the fats that are taken from the plant or from the for example, I might have already told you that uh, one of the government soaps is Mysore sandal. So, Mysore sandal soap made up of Mysore sandal oil that is sandalwood oil. So, if the TFM is above 70 percent that means, that 70 percent of the constituents of the that particular soap is from the oil remaining all other things. Okay. If the fat material is more that means, that oils are more in the soup that will be good for your body and all those things. Okay. So, that is about the oils soybean oils unsaturated fatty acids include polyunsaturated alpha linoleic acid that is 7 to 10 percent linoleic acid is 51 percent and unsaturated oleic acid is 23 percent. These are the biodegradable things are there are the fats are there which are the chemical names saturated fatty acids include stearic acid and palmitic acid. These are the two acids will be there in the saturated fatty acids. Okay. So, you have unsaturated and saturated fatty acid at the same time the viscosity of this one that is the kinematic viscosity at 40 degrees is uh, 32.9 that is approximately 33 meter square per second and the viscosity index is 219 that means, that it is a low viscous fluid. If it is the 
viscosity of this fluid is very low that means that it can penetrate into the nooks and corners of the metal cutting. Assume that I have a cutter, I have a chip it is moving if the viscosity is there is low that means that it can penetrate or it by the capillary action and to the intricate regions of the metal cutting. Okay. So, pore point and flash point are minus 0 0.9 and 240 degrees Celsius. Okay. So, this is good from the point of machining. So, if the machining is uh, below 240 that is the machining temperature there will till that there will not be much problem about the soya bean oil. Not only this will be used as a cutting fluid, but also this is soya bean oil is used as a biodiesel also. In some of the countries like uh, I do not know exactly in Malaysia or somewhere you can see this is a soya bean powered that means that this bus runs on the soya bean biodiesel. Biodiesel is one of the other application of this soya bean. So, why I am emphasizing biodiesel also here is that biodiesel whenever it goes to the combustion there also temperature effect is there. In the metal cutting temperature effect is there. If the emissions are dangerous in 4 stroke engine that is used in a bus the same emissions may be possibility in metal cutting may not be that much temperature, but possibility is there and improper combustion may be another reason in the metal cutting because the temperatures are not so high. So, what I want to prove this soya bean oil from the biodiesel point of view at this particular slide is it is significant reduction in the particulates and carbon monoxide and unburnt hydrocarbons, but nitrogen oxide emissions are increased by 13 percent. That means, if anybody use, uses the cutting fluid the carbon monoxides are reduced and particulates are reduced. In the mechanical machining the temperature is not so high as the 4 stroke engine or the 2 stroke engine that is used in automobiles. In that circumstances there is a improper combustion and if there is a improper combustion in the 4 stroke engine basically carbon monoxide chances are there. In that circumstances even though you have improper combustion I cannot say combustion improper temperate heat generation is not sufficient to do the combustion of this soya bean cutting fluid then it would not generate the carbon monoxide highly at the same time it would not generate the particulates also. Okay. So, unburnt hydrocarbons also it is reduces this is the good thing which a manufacturing engineer can take from a thermal engineer okay, from about the soya bean oil. So, used as a lubricant in metal working and marine and automotive industries as a biodiesel as a very good source of folic acid. So, you can use as a lubricant in the machining operation or the tribological operations is concerned. Next we will move to the coconut oil which is uh, one of the commonly available oils in India. So, now the coconut oil if you see the coconut oil we use it for hair we use it for body massage so on many 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 applications Indians uses it. So, it contains 92 percent saturated fatty acids and 6 percent mono unsaturated fatty acids and 2 percent poly unsaturated fatty acids. So, it is completely the basic of unsaturated and saturated fatty acids the so oils basically saturated fatty acids include lauric acid and uh, mystric acid and palmitic acid and caprylic acid these are the compositions in the saturated acid used as a grease chain bar fluid it also used as a biodiesel and transformer oil. Okay. It is also used as a biodiesel if it is biodiesel that means that its emissions will be tested by the thermal engineers. So, we should not worry much about the emissions of this one. So, we can directly use this as I said no, some of the people even they consume inside the body the coconut oil that is biodegradable and all those things. Coconut oil I have shown the remarkable performance at the cutting speed 90 meters per minute depth of cut 1 mm and feed okay, compared to the mineral oil. That means, the performance of the mineral oil is much poor compared to the coconut oil if you are comparing for this particular performance. And you can also see it gives 4.5 
central line average value compared to mineral oil with that gives 5.5 that means the product quality that one is getting from the coconut oil based cutting fluids during the machining operation is much better compared to other so what the some students you may be seeing 4.5 and 4 5.5 see as the surface roughness is going down that means that my surface finish is better that uh, though if you there are any new students are in between some people miss the classes if my rea value is less that means that my performance is good please note that one so coconut emissions if you see the coconut emissions from the this one so here also people they have used for the combustion applications they have mixed the coconut oil with respect to the commercially used biodiesels and all those things if you are mixing it and if you are checking as the coconut oil increases my ph polyaromatic hydrocarbons which are very dangerous from the point of cutting fluid emissions are enormously decreasing that means that it is very very good from the ecological point of view like ph causes dermatitis problem folliculitis problem cancer problem many problems it will create if it is reducing that is good if you see the nox emissions that nitrogen oxide based emissions nox and sox are basically two components of the emissions in the automobile industry if you see the engine speed versus uh, concentration of nox as you increase the amount of your coconut oil inside what will happen if you see this is going to reduce that is ppm e of nox is going to reduce as you increase the coconut oil in the main oil you can you can see is engine speed versus hydrocarbon concentration hydrocarbon concentration normally is reducing you you, you may be seeing this is the only points are there just let me connect these points you can see this one this is the curve that represent 50% of coconut oil if you are going to mix the 50% that means as it is increasing from 0 to 10 to 20 30 40 and 50 my hydrocarbons which are dangerous from the environmental point of view is going to reduce that means hydrocarbon emissions are going to reduce that it's good for the environmental point of view at the same time if you see the smoke normally the smoke that is coming out from the engine also is reducing if you here also the curve i am just going to connect it you can see the points so this is what i want to say from this particular slide is concern is that if the coconut oil is used for the combustion purposes normally the emissions are going to decrease enormously that is what and we can also see the machining performance of this one if you see the machining performance till now we have proved even though for high temperatures in the automobiles or the engines the coconut oil consumption or the coconut oil usage gives less emissions so now with that analogy it is eco friendly that is proved there now we are using for the mechanical performance if you see the cutting speed versus tool wear what is happening coconut oil performance of the cut, as a cutting fluid has been studied when the machining of aisa 304 material with carbide tool if you see this one anyhow let me see coconut oil sol and soluble oil and street oils have been compared you can see here coconut oil is there soluble oil is there and straight oil also is there okay these are the three varieties of oils are there among which if you see here coconut oil gives the less tool wear that is one represent to coconut oil that means the tool wear is lower compared to soluble oil and straight oils okay that is mechanical performance is better compared to other oils so we have the less emissions we have better performance this is what we want as a mechanical engineer or a manufacturing engineer or as a metal cutting person in particular okay 
so we will come to the summary what all we have studied uh, today we have seen two things that is uh, first point we have summarized the cutting fluids two things we have seen advantages and disadvantages like advantages what are the emulsions how the emulsion function is going to take place and all those things if you are not going to use emulsions there is agglomeration of the oil particles and all those things disadvantages is like emissions and all those things okay. we have studied this then we got a question mark how to maintain the performance but emission should be decreased for that purpose we entered into the eco friendly cutting fluids in the eco friendly cutting fluids eco friendly cutting fluids we entered into eco friendly cutting fluids in the eco friendly cutting fluids we have seen the various the vegetable based cutting fluids and all those things in the vegetable based cutting fluids we have seen the performance performance comparison comparison of eco friendly cutting fluids versus mineral oils so mineral oils are much lower performing compared to eco friendly cutting fluids then we went to two types of uh, eco friendly cutting fluids the soya bean oil and coconut oil till now and many more oils will come in the upcoming class so this is the summary about today class so the thing whenever you want to understand whatever the study you do it is for the human kind if you watch some of the big person lectures recently i was watching one of the lectures is great discoveries are meant if you are using for the mankind that is good so my course also is if you learn this mich me machining fluids and if you can implement for the human kind with mechanical performance also as you are concern it is good i those people who learns about this machining fluids how so you use the right machining fluid for the machining application whatever the machining application that you are going to by choosing the uh, chemical compatibility of your cutting fluid along with the additives that you are going to add and all those things please take care and i will come up with some more uh, type of many more are there that means that again few more uh, eco friendly cutting fluids i will discuss in the upcoming classes so thank you for this class